Romans 4, 13 to 24, from the New Life Version. God promised to give the world to him and to all his family after him. He did not make this promise because Abraham obeyed the law. He promised to give the world to Abraham because he put his trust in God. This made him right with God. If those who obey the law are to get the world, then a person putting his trust in God means nothing. God's promise to Abraham would be worth nothing. God's anger comes on a man when he does not obey the law. But if there were no law, then no one could break it. So God's promise is given to us because we put our trust in him. We can be sure of it. It is because of his loving favor to us. It is for all the family of Abraham. It is for those who obey the law. It is for those who put their trust in God as Abraham did. In this way, he is the father of all Christians. The holy writings say, I have made you a father of many nations. This promise is good because of who God is. He makes the dead live again. He speaks and something is made out of nothing. Abraham believes he would be the father of many nations. He had no reason to hope for this, but he had been told, your children will become many nations. Abraham was about 100 years old. His body was about dead, but his faith in God was not weak when he thought of his body. His faith was not weak when he thought of his wife Sarah being past the age of having children. Abraham did not doubt God's promise. His faith in God was strong, and he gave thanks to God. He was sure God was able to do what he had promised. Abraham put his trust in God, and he made right with him. The words, he was made right with God, were not for Abraham only. They were for us also. God will make us right with himself the same way he did Abraham. If we put our trust in God, who raised Jesus, our Lord, from the dead. Today's Gospel lesson, Matthew 8, 5, 13, New Living Translation. When Jesus returned to Capernaum, a Roman officer came and pleaded with him, Lord, my young servant lies in bed, paralyzed and in terrible pain. Jesus said, I will come and heal him. But the officer said, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come into my home. Just say the word from where you are, and my servant will be healed. I know this because I am under the authority of my superior officers, and I have authority over my soldiers. I only need to say, go, and they go, or come, and they come. And if they say, if I say to my slaves, do this, they do it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed. Turning to those who were following him, he said, I tell you the truth. I haven't seen faith like this in all Israel. And I tell you this, that many Gentiles will come from all over the world, from the east and west, and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at the feast in the kingdom of heaven. But many Israelites those for whom the kingdom was prepared will be thrown into the outer darkness where there will be weeping, gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the Roman officer, go back home because you believe it has happened. And the young servant was healed that same hour. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
Good morning to all that are here and to those that are online. We give God, God glory and honor for you being here today. Um, I just want to make sure I'm not yelling. My ears have been clogged for since Monday. Um, and so I've been watching my tone because I, I, I can hear myself, but I really can't hear myself. So if I ask you, and speak it to you, if I hear you say, hey, I'm a little clock. So, because I can't hear myself this morning. But we are just so excited to be in here. Again, for those who are online, we just want to remind everyone that Ash Wednesday is on Valentine's Day. And so we want to come and celebrate the one who brought love into the world. Um, so we want to start <coughs> Ash Wednesday. And those of you who would like to come out uh, between 5 and 6 for dinner, um, we'll be out here with pancakes and sausage and hopefully some Valentine candy. And then we will go into our worship service at 6 p.m. Um, so invite your friends, come and let us start our Ash Wednesday as we go into the wilderness in the depths of love. This morning, we continue our sermon series, Faith in Turbulent Times, with the sermon title, By Faith We Understand. The challenge that many of us face is that we must ask ourselves daily, have we truly believed in the authority of Jesus and received in our souls, in our distinct eye, the promises of God? For many, again, Jesus is just a prophet or a historical figure that walked the earth, proclaiming that humanity's thoughts and will must be changed. Having this knowledge of Jesus being the man, truly human, does not help us. It does not give us enough substance to build a sturdy foundation that will, be, that will not be destroyed when turbulent times come. The hymn writer writes uh, that our, our, we are built on the foundation of Christ our Lord. God's promises are revealed when we believe and receive who Jesus is in our individual life. Yes, as a community, but first, individually. It is only through revelation given by God that, hmm, you know, when you say, I, I think, you know, I think I know that revelation that we know, that we know, that helps to us for, helps us to begin to build our faith in who Jesus is to us. Mm -hmm. Not to your mom, your dad, to the preacher, to the president, to but to who is Jesus? Mm -hmm. After the identity of Jesus is revealed unto us, we must believe that He is. He's a rewarder of those who are faithful. He is. He is our wonderful counselor. He is our mighty God. He is our prince of peace. He is that what you need him to be. And we receive this knowledge through trusting in who revealed this holy mystery unto us. Trusting in God, the deity. That the incarnate word come into earth and live. This is faith. And by faith, we receive righteousness, wisdom, and knowledge. Let us pray. Before the world began, God, you were. By faith, we believe you walked and talked with humanity. By faith, in a specific time, you came as the word incarnate through the man we call Jesus. By faith, we are to receive and believe that this Jesus is not only the Son of Man, but the Son of God, the only begotten Son, the Messiah, the Christos. And by faith, we who are not Jews receive and believe that Jesus, the Christ, is our King, Lord, and Savior. Merciful Lord, renew our minds today as we re-examine the written word to find hidden truths that we may have missed or even lost. Mm -hmm. Have your way, O oh Lord, in this place. Yes, Lord. This we pray in the authority of Jesus the Christ. 
Amen. Amen. Last week, as we delved into the written word, we saw examples of a paradigm of thinking that if one, you're one, you're one, you're one, if one who receives, reaches out, and take hold of this Jesus as the Hebrews Christ, and believe, accept, as true, trust in the authority of him and in his name, and if we, the one, choose to live by this that we believe in, we are, it, our faith is counted righteous. A person who believes and is assured about God's trustworthiness is counted righteous. When we say amen or amen, let the church say amen. Do we understand when we say amen? Or even we say, and the preacher may say, let the church say there's a song. Let the church say, let the church say, God has spoken. And let the church say, God has, if we believe, when we say amen, we are saying that we have heard from God. And what we heard is firm, faithful, certain, and true. And we hold it with the utmost confidence of who God is in our lives. But the question arises as we contemplate, as we contemplate, as, as we as we try to understand, as we try to, to move it around, as we look at this puzzle and try to place it in the right places of this mystery in a world that many do not believe. In a world that people don't believe in the one the true triune God. Nor do they believe in Jesus as being God's son. This question arises, what is faith? And why do I need to have faith? Do I need it to live? Do I need it to have my being in this on this earth? Do I need it to go to work? Do I need it to be a parent? Do what I need it just to be. You know what? The answer lies not in me giving you the answer, but the answer lies is that what is inside of you. It's inside of you. The writer of the epistle of Hebrews states it this way. Hebrews 11, 1 through 2, the New King James Version. Now, faith is the substance <coughs> of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtain a good testimony. To understand anything, especially the mystery of our faith, we must hold firm of the substance of our belief system. I need to say that again. To understand anything, Especially the mystery of our faith. Mm -hmm. We must hold firm, you know, tight of the substance of our belief system. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't say our belief system <coughs> cannot be corrupt or is corrupt or twisted. Mm -hmm. But we have to hold firm in it. Do you know people who are not as well versed in scripture hold firm to what they believe in more than those who say they are Christian? Those more than who say they are disciples of Jesus Christ. So by faith we understand. Faith, faith is the substance of our reality. Faith is the substance of our reality. So what is substance? So, so, so I'm going to do a little, 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 little teaching, a little science here. Substance. So I'm going to go to a little science here and don't hold me to it because I'm an elementary school teacher, I'm just saying. But is a particular kind of matter with uniform properties. It can be the real physical matter of which a person or thing consists of and which has a tangible, solid presence. Hmm. A particular kind of matter. It can be real physical matter of which a person or thing consists of 
and it's sound. So let's put it in another shell, out of scientific into the spiritual faith in its raw form is the solid foundation that you need on. In its raw form, in its cold form, in the form that you dig out of the earth form, it is the solid form, the solid foundation. On this rock I stand, all other ground is sick and sound. See, then when you sing that song, you get it. It's the solid foundation that you lean on. See, that's why people don't understand hymns, because if you have to read, you have to sing these hymns by faith. And understand it in the raw material of what it is. Mm -hmm. As we look at this dictionary definition, it is plain to see that everyone has faith in something or someone. You can't say you don't have faith. Oh, I don't have faith. Then I can call you a liar. Well, why are you fool? You said that? Well, <laughs> what do you lean upon? What do you hold on? What is your solid foundation? Many of us lean on our own thoughts. We have faith in our own what? Self. Nobody else can do it but me. Anybody leads to the Can't nobody do it but me. And if I, if I don't do it, it will not get done. Anybody ever said that thought it, lived it? <laughs> so you got faith in something, right? Mm -hmm. Or something, or someone, if it's only your what? Sure. Yourself. Oh, oh, come on, come on. Come on. <laughs> we live, come on, come on, come on. We, 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 we have some faith, because, because even as little children, as babies, we got faith in our parents. Now, our parents may fail us and not do what they're supposed to do in the natural order of things, but we lean on our parents. We have faith in them, yes. but they can they, they can hold us up or they can let us down. We have, we lean on the government. We have faith in our government. Government, come on. Mm -hmm. Well, the, we're like, mm, I don't know, but you know, it's, it's, we lean on the government. We <laughs> people don't think about faith like that. Do they? We have faith in the grocery store. That when we drive in there, in our bakers, they drive there, they go to the Kroger's on Door Street, or that's not Door, Holland and Savannah, and you will have faith that they're going to have everything you need in that store. And then we get mad when it's not there. Anybody? <laughs> then that's going to make me have to drive down the river so I know it may not be on Monroe Street. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. We have faith in our banking system. I don't know why. I think I need to go back to my grandma's time when they put the money in the can. I'm just saying. <laughs> but we have we have faith in the banking system and the FDIC. <coughs> Did I say that right? FDIC. That if we lose our money, they gonna give it back. Ah, that's the depression people about. I'm just saying. See, we are living in faith every day. It's just who you have your faith in. Oh, a pun. Hey, can, I, can I just make it simple right where you are today? You are living in faith right now as you sit in your chair. Because you have the faith that that chair will hold you. <laughs> and it will not break. <laughs> and you will not tumble, tumble out. <laughs> and you have faith that when, before you went to sit there, you, some of you just sat down and didn't even look. Then check the chair, to shake the chair. You just did what? What? <laughs> oh, I'm like, what in the, okay, sorry. By faith, everybody okay? Mm -hmm. By faith, we understand the natural law. Well, what do you mean? Y'all going to get in science again, so do not hold me accountable. Go to my elementary school thoughts now. By faith, we know the natural laws. Well, what do you mean? In elementary school, we were taught that Sir Isaac Newton had thoughts and experiments. And because he his faith in his experiments, he had faith about humanity. And his thoughts and experiments became our faith. But what do you mean? The natural law of gravity. What goes up will come down. We got faith in it. Now, everybody didn't have faith in the beginning of Sir Isaac Newton, but these 
many thousands and thousands of years later, guess what? It's real. A hundred years later, it's real. But I said, even the satellite that's up in the sky, they have to use something to keep it up there, and you have to have something holding it in the sky, and it's going to sit there. You ever put a balloon? It's going to fall somewhere. The natural law of gravity. By faith, we strive to understand the natural laws that are in the earth. You know, let me call that science. Uh -uh. That holds the earth and the people thereof. By faith, it's science. As by faith, we are called to understand physical and natural laws. Why do birds fly south? We don't know, but we know they do. Some birds do, some birds stay. All by what? Faith. You have to watch the movie Migration. It was hilarious. They had faith. They said, let us go. To, let's go. We're going opposite, but let us go anyway. See, we are called to understand physical and natural laws. And we are also called to understand the spiritual laws through our faith in the natural. Did you hear that? We are called to understand the spiritual through our faith in the natural. Paul writes to the church in Rome to remind them of the father of faith, Romans 4, 18. Abraham believed he would be the father of many nations. He had no reason to hope for this. Remember, faith is the such of things. What? He didn't even hope to have a child. But he was told, your children will become many nations. Abraham was about 100 years old. His body was about dead. But his faith in God, not in his body, he didn't have faith in the natural laws. Not even the natural law of his wife. But his faith in God was not weak when he thought of his body. His faith was not weak when he thought of his wife Sarah being past the age of having children. There was nothing supposed to be working. All the plugs were dead. Abraham did not doubt God's promise. His faith in God was strong, and he gave thanks to God. He was sure God was able to do what God had promised. His faith of natural law had to, what? Go up on the end. His faith in the spirit had to succeed, succeed that of the natural. This leads to the second point of today's sermon. By faith we understand, faith is, the, faith is the substance of our confidence. Faith is the substance of our realization. Now faith is the substance of our confidence. Confidence, D dictionary definition, the feeling or belief that one can rely on someone or something, firm trust, it is also the state of feeling certain about truth of something. The feeling of self-assurance arising from one's appreciation of the abilities or qualities of someone else, or even in yourself. Abraham was confident in God. But he said he was able that God, in verse 21 of Hebrews, Abraham was sure God was able to do what God had promised. We also see this in our gospel lesson in Matthew about the Roman centurion encounter with Jesus. He heard that Jesus was nearby. He heard through the Jews and then according to their faith that Jesus could heal. He heard. He didn't see. He didn't see Jesus doing the miracles. He didn't see Jesus lay hands on anybody or speak. He heard what someone else said. Did you hear about the faith? It's going ahead of the natural, physical law into the spiritual. He had confidence in those that were around him that if they said it was true, he heard. Mm -hmm. yeah. The centurion tells Jesus he is not worthy for Jesus is to come to his house. To heal the servant, he states it this way. Just speak the word, 
and my servant shall be healed. Now that's confidence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Saturnian has a feeling or belief that he can rely on Jesus because of what he heard. The centurion is confident because he understood the physical law of authority. Authority is physical law. He understood that. Matthew 8, 9 says, I know this because I am under the authority of my superior officer. I know what you can do because I'm already there in the natural laws of authority. And you are to have the supernatural the spiritual authority of God. He says, I have authority over my soldiers. There's authorities over me. But I only need to say, go. And those that are under me, go. If I say to come, they come. And if I say to my servants or slaves, do this, guess what? They don't ask questions. They just do it. Mm -hmm. He says, why? Because they had confidence in his station of life and in the station of his position that they needed to do it. And if not, consequences. So he's telling Jesus, I understand that authority here on earth. And if you have that in the spirit, you can just speak the word. Now he hadn't read John 1. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God. It wasn't written. But he understood the natural law of authority. And if God is over the natural, God is also over the spiritual. You see, understanding the physical law in the earth, the saturn could have faith to believe and receive the person of Jesus and what Jesus could do. Many of us trust more in the physical law than in the spiritual. <clears throat> it's, but I come to tell you, it's not either or, but it's both and. Let me just break it down even more. Science against spiritual does not exist in God's realm. To believe in the science of life leads us to understand the spiritual realm of life. Spiritual, uh, spirituality is the science of the unseen. I remember God spoke that to me. I said, God, you know, I, I'm not smart enough to even believe you know that. Spirituality is the science of the unseen. So you can't put science and spiritual uh, against at odds. They are together. They work together. To know the physical laws is to be able to see in the unseen of what's happening behind the scenes. I don't know how. I know how to put a seed in the ground. I know what happens if I put the seed in the ground, but I don't know why it happens. We know the science of it. But there's a spiritual behind it. The third, which leads me to my third point. By faith we understand. Faith is the substance of our trust. Hebrews 11, 1b. Now faith is the evidence of things not seen. Evidence, the available, the available body of facts or information indicating whether a belief or proposition is true or valid. In law, it is the information given personally, drawn from a document, or in the form of material objects, tending or used to establish facts in a legal investigation, or admissible as testimony in a court. It is the sign or indication of something. Faith is the sign or indication of the spiritual in the world. Faith is the sign or indication of the spiritual in the world. Mm -hmm. The Roman centurion was a Gentile. He was a Jew, but he understood and moved in faith by trusting the authority of Jesus. Matthew 8, 10 said, when Jesus heard this, that when the centurion said, just speak the word, he was amazed. Turned to those who were following him, who were you? He said, I tell you the truth. I haven't seen faith like this in all Israel. Wow. 
That's telling there's more faith out there outside of the church than it is inside. The people of Israel had known God through faith in Abraham and Moses, but could not change their belief system to accommodate that which they had been hoping for. The evidence was there. They would not believe. Jesus tells in one of the texts, he said, if you don't want to believe in me, believe in my words. That's evidence. The Roman centurion believed because of the evidence that he saw in the people that were around him. That's why we must live by faith and not by sight because people are watching us who say are Christians and disciples of Jesus Christ. When stuff come out of our mouth, they be like, I thought she, yeah, her, I thought she was a Christian. Well, I thought he was a Christian. So in conclusion, to have faith in turbulent times, we must peer through the lens of our realization, our confidence, and our trust in Jesus being the author and finisher of our lives. Many times we will not be able to understand what is happening in the natural realm. But we must put our hope in what is stated as true in the spiritual. That's why we have to know the promises of God. That's the only way we can stand on the promises of Christ our Lord. This is only how we can say our firm foundation is in Jesus Christ. The church's foundation is in Jesus Christ. Remember, I think we understand. Living by faith is living in the capacity to be able to accept or tolerate delays, problems, or suffering without becoming a law or action. Yeah. When the last time you were frustrated? <coughs> I, want, I want you to point to yourself. Don't look, don't look point at me. <laughs>
and that the church say, So I invite you today, whether we have all things or nothing, God meets us where we are. We are not our circumstances. We are not our labels. We are individual lights of divine inspiration, seeking to join our hearts with our source, that we may live as Christ. We may live in the physical world, not understanding the spiritual, but holding on to the unseen. Come to this moment of the table with your whole self. Come to this table believing in the unseen, believing in the spiritual laws that makes up the natural laws. Come believing in the science that no, the bread that we eat is not the body of Jesus and the juice that we drink is not the blood, but it is according to our That God may nurture us. Mm -hmm. That God may nurture the divine spark within us. Come. Let us pray our prayer of learning together. Everyone. Gracious, Gracious God, God, when we speak of your great power, the power that abounds in creation all around us, we sometimes wonder if it is in our own lives. We hear that you are faithful that you remember us and your promises. Yet there are places in our lives that don't feel quite right. We often wonder what we have to do with our lives, especially in the places that hurt. Help us trust your promised grace, for we long to touch your healing grace. Amen. We ask you to sit in silent prayer as you bring those hurts, that incapacity. Who anybody been run? Having issues with anxiety and frustration, bring those together.
saying, eat, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this and remember of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, the shepherd's cup. As he was prepared for, uh, uh, mm -mm. as Jesus was prepared to face his darkest fears, fears, he took this cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, even those who would betray and reject him, saying, drink from this all of you. This is my life poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it and remember some me. With joy and gratitude, we break this bread. Remember the many times Jesus was revealed to his disciples in the breaking of bread. And remember, we will take and eat this bread. With faith and hope, we take this cup. Remember Jesus' gifts of grace and forgiveness. Pour it out for his disciples of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And remember, we will take and drink of this cup. And so to remember of your mighty acts and your signs of light and life in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as signs of light and life and union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ was, Christ is, Christ will be. Bless, O oh God, these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the presence of your love and grace. Bless all of us gathered here, that we may become your very image, blessed to bless your good earth. Blow through our gathering with the power of your Holy Spirit. Make us one with you, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Jesus comes. Amen. Amen. And now with the comments of the children of God, let us pray the prayer of that Jesus taught his disciples. Everyone, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but the deliverance from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Remember, <clears throat> it's in the break of the brain. And it's in the drinking of the cup by faith that we are redeemed people. We are Easter people. Will our service please come? <laughs> 